Thank you very much, Gloria. It's been a very long time since I've been here. This is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net. I say that because there is a very significant YouTube there on Stop the Crime. And one of the reasons why I was not here for two and a half years, I used to be a regular attendee here. But um, Pacific Gas and Electric was intercepted with a download of documents professing the fact that they were going to be using directed energy weapons satellite based on Sonoma County. That has been up on YouTube with a plan to burn up Northern California. We discovered that Pacific Gas and Electric is operated by and large by Rothschild. Rothschild owns Weather Central and also has a large hand in weather modification globally. And I'm so sad to be here today because I have family members that lost homes. And I live in a county that I call home that is being literally overrun by a power that has not yet been discussed. And I'm horrified and sad to be here right now. Very sad. But the plan to burn up Northern California was real. It was your first early morning. And they were emails that were sent to other government officials that knew about this. And I would ask you please to watch the YouTube, listen to it, because the second plan of burning up Northern California hasn't yet happened, but it will. It will happen. So Pacific Gas and Electric is Rothschild. Everybody listening can type in PG&E followed by Rothschild. You can also type in Edison International in Southern California followed by Rothschild. You will in fact find out that Rothschild is behind all of the utilities nationwide. This is why our grid is not hardened up against an electric, an EMP, electromagnetic pulse. We are literally here as a country and a, and a um, society and here in Northern California and elsewhere at the hands of something larger than what we realize. And I was quiet for two and a half years. That's why I haven't been here. But I'm here now. And I'm just telling you this. You had an early warning, but you didn't pay heed. It was too outrageous and too outlandish to believe that it was real. But it was. This is Jamie Lee. I'm here with Deborah Tavares, and we're at the 575 Administration Boulevard or Road, the uh, administration building that's holding a meeting today. And here's Deborah Tavares, who's been attending the meeting all morning. And we want to get a little bit of what she's seen. It's, it's been a pretty incredible morning. But before we start that, Deborah, why don't you hold up the newspaper from this morning and the Press Democrat um, and open it up there, just unfold it. And what they're showing here is that they found archaeological, uh, historical native Pomo um, artifacts in the, uh, I don't know if it's Coffee Park or Fountain Grove, but effectively this will become a historical site where they won't be allowed to rebuild based on uh, Native American uh, histor history. And so this is another way they're going to keep people from uh, reoccupying Oh, the in land. Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen it is. And we expect to see more of these finds come out. So, Deborah, what, what did you see today in uh, being there for the first three hours of this full-on meeting that includes a bunch of media, Board of Supervisors, FEMA, and who else right. is here? Okay, so I'm here today because we received an, a media advisory of this meeting held in Sonoma, at the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors. And it says they invite community members to attend to provide input to guide post-fire recovery efforts at a workshop on infrastructure today, Tuesday. February the 27th, 2018. And there will be other local, state, and federal officials will be taking part as well. So they talk about the topics that will be discussed to include and prepare for a resilient city. It's all about resiliency, fire safety, utility infrastructure, and strengthening and improving our community warning programs. So I want to go over some of the things that I heard in this meeting. It's very diabolical. All the perpetrators of this event are here. They're building up from a planned disaster by the use of directed energy weapons, which you can hear that interview in full by Googling the plan to burn up Northern California. And of course, this is on your site, StopTheCrime.net. Yes, and I am, of course, M. Deborah Tavares, and I do run the website, StopTheCrime.net, where you can find that uh, plan to burn up Northern California as well. 
But the agenda here today by the perpetrators here in Northern California was to again discuss the community warning program, preparing for a more resilient county. Now, for many of you, I've reported on resilient cities. I would recommend that you go to the YouTube Kill Cities by Rothschild and Rockefeller to understand what resilient planning is all about in your town. This is happening here in Sonoma County, but it's an extension of you in Agenda 21 policies and all the policies in your cities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And they're talking about fire safety, utility infrastructure, impact on fire infrastructure, and a discussion. Now, I was able to speak for two and a half minutes in the first session today. And I told them their first er early warning sign was from the emails that Pacific Gas and Electric and PG&E sent three years ago, and that it had been out on the internet, and they didn't uh, attend to this. There was no attention paid to this. It was too outlandish to have PG&E and Pacific Gas and Electric talk about the use of satellite lasers on Northern California. Specifically, they said Sebastopol, which is, of course, in Northern California. But there is a second plan uh, on that discussion, the plan to burn up Northern California, too. And I advise them that that has not yet happened, but it will. So I would urge everybody to listen to the entire uh, two-hour presentation. It covers two radio shows on the Jeff Rents Radio Network, of which I was affiliated with at the time. But today's meeting is diabolical. This is really like a deadly computer game going live. What do I mean by that? Well, they're talking about deploying, deploying cameras throughout this area. They say that it will take about uh, 30 cameras, 20 to 30 cameras. They will have a 150 mile range. They will have uh, infrared so that you can observe in live, in real time, 24 hours around the clock. And they say that uh, it will be a hardened network and uh, it will be tied up um, and connected to Amazon and the cloud. And these cameras will be less expensive for Sonoma County, Napa, and Lake Counties to deploy, which they said they need them because of fires and earthquakes. These are going to be up in the air? They're putting these are up? going to be, they say that... 30 cameras that will go 250 miles? Uh, 100, 150 miles. 150 mile range to do what? Why are they yeah, doing? Yeah, to have, be an early warning visual for fire. in real time on fires and or earthquakes, whatever type of uh, destructive uh, weaponized weather assault any of us get. These cameras will show them in real time. They say that the uh, first responders will know in real time where to go. And they were talking about um, how uh, there has been no training in the social science of disasters. And one city council member said that uh, we, we need to have a monthly training session with all the public here, much like they had in San Francisco years ago with a drop, tuck, and cover. So they want to have a um, neighborhood uh, watch. They want to have a neighborhood education where people are training on a monthly basis for uh, the doom of the weaponized weather assaults on all of us. Which, which can also be used as a see something, say something, Absolutely. turned around on us and spying on each other. Yeah, in fact, that is exactly what they're saying, Jamie. They're saying that this has got to go from top down into our neighborhoods. And that in Oakland, they conscripted about 20,000 people to report from the ground after all of the major events that Oakland went through. Uh, there has been FEMA here this morning. Uh, there has been, uh, and the next session, which is coming, uh, going to start here shortly, is going to be all about uh, making Sonoma County resilient. So again, I asked all of you to type in oh, 100 resilient cities, and you'll find out who's behind that. It's Rockefeller. You will understand that this is for climate refugees. This is what they are doing globally now and in the United States. They are creating climate refugees to herd us in to available housing after they have literally destroyed the housing that is available to us. And as um, we pointed out as we started this program, already showing why some homes will not be able to be rebuilt because of the unearthing of, um, of relics.
um, ancient artifacts. This is going to expand. We're going to cover this locally. We're boots on the ground. We're coming uh, live right now. Uh, again, today um, is a very monumental day here in Sonoma County. We will be posting this entire meeting on StopTheCrime.net so that you can watch it in segments. It is something extremely important. I realize that it is a long uh, post, but there are segments in it that all of you need to take the time to watch and listen because this is headed to you. And this is as a result of a weaponized weather assault. And that is now the new norm, increased weaponized weather assaults. We have been told that fire season in California will no longer be just a fire season as it had been in the past. It will be all year long. And uh, we know certainly with the plan to burn up Northern California, how they're doing that with killing the trees, with all the toxins from the Kim Trail and the drought that they keep us perpetually in, and we're in a drought again right now. Greatest drought in the history of California. Last year was the greatest rains and snow, followed previously by the greatest droughts. And this last summer was record temperatures, and then we got torched out. So we're, we're under attack here. Can you, can Deborah, PG&E is Pacific Gas and Electric, our local uh, electrical power supply. Can you speak and talk to me what you talked about last night with me about the documentation on our homeowners' uh, bills with PG&E about uh, the EMF frequencies? Yes, actually, um, I will be putting that up on StopTheCrime.net, but the bill inserts in our monthly billing with Pacific Gas and Electric and also uh, Southern California Edison. Any of you listening right now can just uh, type in and look at your uh, bill inserts online about the explanation of uh, EMF, electromagnetic frequencies. They describe electromagnetic frequencies as something that is common to our use of electricity and appliances, etc. They are saying that uh, the health deficits of electromagnetic frequencies is inconclusive by international, national, and California standards. While they say there's no known health effects or, or problems from the uh, electromagnetic frequencies, they then negate what they say by saying, but it is inconclusive. And consensus requires that they continue to review the subject. So what is happening in our bills is the admission from our electric companies and gas companies that they are um, saying that it in fact does cause health damage. So, And they're not sure it is to what effect it's caused by or how much it's causing, so they must put the disclaimer in the documentation we get mailed every month, correct? And they do. And what they say is that if we're concerned about the amount of frequencies that we're receiving, if we have sensitivity, many people are EMF electric um, uh, sensitives. They say that you can reduce your own frequencies in your homes by um, turning off your appliances, not using an electric razor, not using a hair blower, um, not using your flat screen television set, uh, your cell phone, etc. Turning off your Wi-Fi, moving it away from your head, I think. Yes, moving it away from your head. In other words, they're making it our responsibility to reduce the increased frequencies that they're killing us with. And they've warned us so legally, like all the rest of the drug companies with all the syndromes, they, they say they've warned us, so it's caveat emperor, it's our responsibility to, to take charge of our own lives and what's happening to us. That's absolutely correct. So um, we will have this up on StopTheCrime.net. It will be um, up to, at the top of the home page so that those of you who have not received this in your billing, you can see what they're saying to us in our bills. It's diabolical. This is and, and there's other meetings like the 5G going in here as we've chronicled before. There's four meetings going on because there was a newspaper article about people protesting putting in the 5G, and now they're hosting four meetings as well. These are happening one on top of the other very, very, very quickly as people are not allowed to move back in their homes yet, and there's benzene in the soil, so some of the escrows are being canceled as uh, potential buyers and vulture uh, capitalists well, are moving in. Well, Jamie, what is also very um, horrific 
is that at a water meeting that we attended just last week, they said that because of the 324 homes in a specific area in Fountain Grove, which is just above the Hilton Hotel that burned here uh, in October of 2017 during the U U.S.'s history most costly fire, and we're still with body counts now, we still don't know how many people were killed and or murdered as a result of this fire. But what they're saying about these 224 homes, of which there were only a few homes left standing, the water started to taste bad and smell bad, so those few occupants that were still able to live in homes that were there reported it. Uh, the county has had lab tests. They found benzene in the water. They started taking uh, water bottles up to these people, and of course that doesn't minimize their showers, their sinks, their uh, laundry. They were also told not to water their landscaping because the benzene, which is of course cancer-causing and other kinds of ailments before you die of cancer, um, they said don't water your plants because it will seep down into the groundwater table. So there are still people living up in Fountain Grove, which we now call Fountain Grave, mm -hmm. uh, drinking and being exposed to benzene. But what they also said at this uh, meeting was that the city would issue building permits for rebuilds in that specific benzene contaminated area, but they would not be issuing um, occupancy permits because uh, the benzene and the infrastructure of the water system would have to be replaced and they're still working at getting to the bottom of this contamination of which they claim they don't understand what the bottom of the contamination is. Just like they're saying they don't know what the reality of these fires are and they still haven't weighed in on that. Four months later they still cannot tell us officially with all their experts and forensics, fire forensics and the captain uh, or chief uh, Ken Pimlot of CAL FIRE, I called him out directly. Shame on him for not being able to even give us an idea of how six over 60 fires started in the middle of the night and started out of nowhere when no storms were forecast. So I wanted to kind of finish this on a positive note. I went to a wonderful meeting that you put together last week, a health symposium, Deborah, and it was so wonderful to see the activists combined with health practitioners. We had holistic people that we had uh, crystal people we had holistic uh, herbal medicines. We had a salad masters, a wonderful gal doing cooking classes, which uh, we're going to do ourselves on using uh, non-toxic cookware, which I didn't know anything about, and that was very educational. But it was a wonderful way to bring communities together. And you know, we talk a lot about dark and doom and gloom, but there are solutions of what we can do. And I saw that last week and got very encouraged and very empowered to see. We talked about activism and what was going on. But we had a solution based of how you can use zeolite, you can use thermaline, you can use shungite. I just went down after the talk and got some, some shungite for my son and, and for crystals. myself. And, and crystals. crystals for energy healing as well. And preventing the assaults of electromagnetic frequencies on our homes and to our bodies. Crystals are extremely important. We'll be talking more about that as we move through more solutions uh, coming soon and specifically telling all of you where you can get crystals because we've made contact with an international exporter of crystals who has um, opportunity to go into South America to the crystal mines. And he's extremely well known and he's boxing up crystals and telling people how to position them in their homes and around their property, which does reduce the uh, psychotronic weapon assaults uh, onto our properties. He explained how crystals were our advantage in World War II um, as quartz in um, radios. radios yeah. And that was very, very interesting. And of course, many people uh, are unaware of the importance of crystals. So we really want to underscore the importance of crystals as we find our environment being uh, further layered with frequencies that are happening. What we're also noticing is that the Verizon assault with putting in uh, these additional uh, frequencies throughout our communities is happening throughout the county. In fact, you will find that generally these types of um, agendas start going through the country. When we first discovered the deployment of the smart meters, it was not just here in Northern California or Southern California. 
We just happened to notice it when it was already 75% deployed upon us with smart meters. So what you need to do is you need to look and find out what your city is doing with engaging um, your utility companies or your wireless companies to deploy street lights, to deploy additional um, additives to all of your existing infrastructure to prevent dropped cell calls. That's how they'll promote this. And faster downloads of your videos, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yeah. and of course, the frequencies are what is going to absolutely destroy our cellular um, makeup and cause massive genocide. We also have on StopTheCrime.net a, um, a new document. It's entitled um, Population Engineering and um, and uh, climate action. It's at the top of the website. I would recommend that you all download this and understand how the PSYOPs is being played out. But as Jamie pointed out, it's important to link together with uh, solutions, and that's what we're trying to do here in between reporting during these horrific meetings that we attend. So really want to encourage everyone that's listening right now, we have to engage. We must engage. We can no longer sit quiet and we need to go forward with the love and hope for humanity because that's where it is right now. We need to do all we can in creating awareness. That is our legacy. That is what we are here now for and what we are here now to do. So thank you so very much for uh, listening and pass this information along far and wide. More importantly, I will leave you with this. We have primary water. We do not have a water shortage. This is the PSYOPs now being played out in Cape Town in South Africa. They've just extended the zero day that they keep talking about no more water. We discovered the PSYOPs being played here in uh, Northern California in a town called Mountain House. Mountain House about four years ago was being shown throughout the United States as running out of water in 10 days. When our research team called some realtors in Mountain House, we discovered that they did not even know that their town was being used as a PSYOPs. So as we looked into it, we found that Mountain House was purchased by Sun Trust in the mid-90s. We researched Sun Trust, which was Rothschild. Mountain House was built as a UN Agenda 21 smart city, fully self-contained. It runs by CCNRs, it has a very peculiar city setup, and the financing for buying homes is through the USDA. And uh, this was just really literally a town set up to, um, to create a PSYOPs on limited water resources. They got busted. So you need to understand we don't have a water shortage. When you hear water shortages being discussed, you need to go out and get the information out about right, primary water. So give me water. the elevator pitch on primary water. We did drill down, drill down 300 feet and we got all the water we want? Is that Well, no, actually uh, it surfaces. Primary water uh, explained is a YouTube. Again, primary water ex explained will tell you about the depths of water. It always surfaces. It's the process of hydrogen and oxygen. When that merges together, that creates vapor. It must surface as a water form. And it does here uh, in California and where you live as well, in hot and cold springs, also geysers that spray up out of the ground endlessly, where oases appear in deserts, sometimes where it very seldom if ever rains. Also at the very top of these uh, volcanic mountain peaks in Hawaii, where you see these beautiful cascading waterfalls continuing to flow endlessly. This is primary water. And uh, they blew up the primary water, uh, amazing eighth wonder of the world called the Great Man-Made River Project that Momar Haddafi created Libya. for his people in Libya. That was blown off the map. You can type in the Great Man-Made Water Project and you can watch it being built in Libya. It was an amazing feat. And the Libyan people were given 75% of their water for free. Now keep in mind, this is pure, clean drinking water. We've only been taught about the secondary water cycle, which is rain and snowmelt. Rain and snowmelt is actually the process of the evaporation of primary water. So all of you need to know, we are floating on water. We are the water planet. And oftentimes we don't need to access it deeply and sometimes we do. So again, primary water explained is a good illustration on how and how you access water. So creating these false scarcities, we can make a scarce city 
and we can control prices just like we do with the oil now switching to batteries when we've had free energy for over 100 years with Tesla. And what I understand with the attacks on Libya, Gaddafi, there's a wonderful uh, more of our Gaddafi's manifesto. He had those people living in pleasure. They had free water, they were, they free homes, homes, free education, free education, and it was a model for the future. And that's why they took him out. And he was just getting ready to back the dinar with gold. He wanted out of the Rothschild network. Just yeah. like Lincoln was going to back the greenback, and Kennedy was going to switch to the dollar. They will not allow that to happen. And to segue into Bitcoin, they're allowing that to happen, so they want it to happen. It's not just rogue bunch of guys putting it out. They're going to a cryptocurrency and getting rid of the dollar bills, and then it soon we'll have tattoos with our old datas on us and the rest of this. And, and the next segment, we're going to get into wetware. <laughs> yes, and I would urge all of you to go to primarywater.org. Share this site far and wide. Our children are getting very depressed, and I just was hearing this morning on the radio, Jamie, that they want 12 year olds now to take a survey because they're seeing depression in children and they want to start um, Medicate them. medicating them and having them go to seek psychiatric intervention. And of course, why not? Our children are being taught that there's just too many people using too much stuff and that's not true. And we need to do all we can to raise our children up with the idea that the scarcity is not real. It's an entire psyops building new markets up on top of false scientific realities. So we can do anything that's positive. It's to share the good news of water. Plentiful, pure, clean, fresh drinking water. So we're going to be going back into this meeting shortly. And we'll have more to share as we roll into the afternoon here in what's left of Northern California. And, and I just wanted to add another thing with the water is grow your own food, folks. Teach your children how seeds work and where things come from. Get them as self-sufficient and as self-reliant because as they're cutting down, we're, we're going to have the market collapse. And when the market collapses, there's going to be a lot of poverty going on. They're already cutting 30% off mental health. They're kicking out the homeless again, cutting funding for everything. And this is well, the Wall Street markets are doing extremely record highs. When the market's correct, which they're starting to do now, all of this will collapse. So it will become self-sufficient, self-reliant, and join your community and join your neighbors. And I want to just take one moment here to thank a hero of mine, and that's Lou. <laughs> Lou is on the cameras behind the scenes doing all the work supporting Deborah and giving her the energy to come out here and providing uh, the resources so we can see all this wonderful work this woman, this courageous, courageous woman is doing to help bring awareness, to help be the change we have to see. And please, please support Deborah at StopTheCrime.net and do it yourself. It's not her doing the work that's going to make it better for everybody. It's all of us taking what she's doing and leveraging off it yourself in your own communities and in your own towns. Well, Jamie, while I appreciate the um, the gratitude given towards Lou and myself, I also want to thank you because while we only recently met, um, I want to say that it is so important that all of us connect with people that understand. That will help to fortify all of us. Stay um, aware. Watch Jamie's uh, channel. What is your channel now? They keep taking oh, they keep you down. They keep taking me down. It's, it's the back to the original one, a plain A-P-L-A-N-E truth. Uh, and you can look it up and see how long I'm still up. But th this is such important work. And just to make really clear, this is going to happen everywhere or is happening everywhere, these rollouts. And these were, we're called to these times, folks. It's time to step up on the plate. It's not about you. It's sacrificing for the sacred like our parents did, like their parents did. And we're going to be the change we have to see. But it's not going to be the end result. We have to start making the change. And thank you, Deborah, for everything you're doing. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lou. Thank you, Jamie. Catch you next time. Hi, um, Deborah Tavares. Um, I certainly do remind you that pg and &E is currently under criminal probation. And um, Pacific Gas and Electric commiserated with the California Public Utility Commission in that email exchange about the laser um, DEW that was going to be used uh, on Sebastopol in, in Salem County. So I know that this sounds crazy, it did to me at first too, but it came to our attention because PG&E's smart meter director tried to falsely integrate himself into a uh, anti-smart meter movement. 
So that's how we came up with this email exchange. I think it's vitally important for you to check that out. I know that you have to work with now the perpetrator, as I see it, of this crime. It happened to all of us. But I also want to talk about the smart meters and how the smart meters may have influenced the additional burning of fires because the smart meters have caused fires all over the world. And with the pulse frequencies that were occurring that night, which is one of the reasons that that water station uh, near Spring Lake went down, I was sitting at the water agency uh, meeting about that, and they did uh, have to um, move on over from PG&E because of the pulse frequencies to their generator system, just what um, was being said to you right now. But it was pulse frequencies. They were browning out. And I know that many people in their homes were browning out too. So I think it's very important to take into consideration how did the smart meters facilitate the fires as well. Um, I'd be curious to know what pg &E knew on the 16th floor of their weather um, room, on the 16th floor of the pg &E buildings. They have a meteorologist and a weather station. I actually had the opportunity to tour that. So it, is, it does exist. I'd be interested in knowing what pg &E knew about uh, the weather conditions themselves that night, being certainly that Rothschild was involved in Weather Central. Thank you, um, thank you for your comments. Uh, Mary Morrison, and that you next, followed by John Chantel. Deborah, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you, Mary. Yes, you are talking about the wrong way. Uh, you let your exploiters talk at length here. They all want more staff and more money to take care of this problem which you are not addressing. This is melted aluminum. This is melted aluminum. I've got all kinds of them. I've got six foot long pieces at home that I collected. This is a metal pan that went through it. It didn't melt. That's because the heat of these explosions was right around 1400 degrees. This didn't melt. This did. These were explosions. They were not fires. You all talked about how extraordinary they were, and uh, the Supervisor Gorman talked about it was like, just like they were 50 years ago. We had the same fires coming down from Calistoga, so forth, in Santa Rosa. That took, what, two days? This took four hours. They weren't the same at all. You've got to start facing reality here. You're wasting a lot of time and money. And whether this thing's going to happen again, it'll only not happen again if you decide and cover up, uncover who caused it. And I submit it was an attack on this county, so you wouldn't listen to Mary and I and others, hoping that you will hold Congress accountable for bankrupting this country under martial law 107243. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ellis. 